The reading for today comes from the book of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came up that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know who, on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to them, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do with you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know that it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? 
That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat it. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm to attack the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor, which you did not grow. It came into being in the night and perished in his night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than a hundred thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be unto you all. Whoo wee! That was a long one, wasn't it? But at least that passage, that, that Bible passage, it was a story. Can you imagine if I had just read three chapters from the book of Leviticus? Yeah, no, seriously, if you don't get that joke... Um, so I suggest right now you open up your Bible to Leviticus and just start reading. If you need a good nap, it'll put you there. Um, <laughs> basically, it's like reading one of those thick law books that the, the, the law students have to read. Well, because it is a law book. I mean, it's, it's the books, one of the books of the law. Um, whereas Jonah, this story is more like reading a John Grisham novel. There's the law in there, but it's, it's wrapped up in a, in a nice, neat story. And funny thing, funny enough that with the, with the book of Jonah, we, we not only find the law, but we also find the gospel as well. Oh, Nineveh, that great city. But we should probably take a moment here and pause, shouldn't we? Where exactly is Nineveh? Where does God want Jonah to go? Well, God wants Jonah to go into Nineveh. Nin Nineveh is... And today, we would call it northern Iraq. Um, it was the, the capital city for the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire was the ones who took out the northern kingdom of Israel. Um, who, well, who was? Who will? Um, we haven't gotten to that point in the story. Um, but so it, it was um, it, people in Jesus' time and before that, they knew where Nineveh was and who, who lived there. So it's no wonder that Jonah would go the opposite direction. God would say, I want you to go to Nineveh. And where did Jonah go? Jonah went the complete opposite direction. Um, he had, they wanted, God wanted him to go to Nineveh, which is in northern Iraq. Uh, so Jonah, Jonah went the other direction. He went to a port. He went to Joppa, which was a, a port on the Mediterranean Sea. And it said that he was going to sail west. Um, where was he going? I don't even remember now. But, well, brain is not working right there. Um, so, yeah, he was going to go to Tarshish. There's, they're not exactly sure where it was, uh, where Tarshish was. But it, it was opposite direction from Nineveh. That's the main gist of it. And so he sailed west, the opposite direction. And basically, Jonah was trying to run away from God. Well, he tried to run away from God. Um, I know from firsthand experience that running away from God does not work. Um, Jonah, he tried to sail away, so God sent a storm. And the sailors threw him overboard, and a large fish swallowed him up, 
and brought him back to, back to shore after three days of sitting in that fish's belly. So eventually, Jonah came around, and he listened to God, and he went to Nineveh, which was a huge city. It was so big that it took three days to walk across it. Um, to walk from one end of the city to the other, it took three days. So Jonah, 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 Jonah. Jonah couldn't even, <laughs> he didn't even make it halfway. He just walked a day's journey into Nineveh. Didn't even make it to the center of the city. He walked into there, um, roughly you know, a third of the way into the city, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh will be no more. Well, not that. Um, but he said, uh, it, he said it shall, Nineveh shall be overthrown. Then he turned around and walked back out of the city and sat down on the edge of the city to wait for God's wrath to come and destroy the city. But that didn't happen, right? God didn't destroy Nineveh. In fact, God forgave Nineveh. Nineveh, her king, and all the people, they begged for forgiveness, and they fasted to show that they were remorseful, that they were sorry. They put on sackcloth. You know, they took off all their ornaments and everything and made themselves look miserable, and God forgave them. Which is wonderful news, right? Well... I mean, they were shown the error of the ways, so they had changed, and then God forgave them. Um, in fact, Jonah went into the city and basically he said, turn or burn, and everything turned out all right. Um, but the funny thing is, that upset Jonah. Jonah got um, ticked off. He, he got so mad that he wanted to die. He was so upset that God had forgiven the Ninevites for all their troubles, for all their sins. And it kind of makes me stop and pause a moment for here and think, Jonah's kind of a self-righteous jerk here, isn't it? But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, here he had run away from God, and then God had forgiven him for making a mistake, and then he went and listened to God and followed God's command, and he preached to these people, and the word of God worked. They, they repented. They changed from their ways. But Jonah didn't think that was fair. He wanted them to suffer for their sins. But here's where the cool part of this story is. I want you to pause, take a moment now, and to think, where do you belong? Where do you fit into this story? Are you like Jonah early on, um, where you have this inkling of what God wants you to do? But you're not sure if you can or even should or um, if you can even do it. If you can carry out what God's calling you to do. Or are you like Jonah in the middle of this story here where he begrudgingly goes to work. He, gives it, he does it half-hearted. Um, doesn't even go halfway. Doesn't even go halfway to do, to do what God told him to do. Um, he goes in there, he does it, um, whatever you're doing, you know, are, are you just begrudgingly walking through your life half-heartedly doing whatever you do because, well, God told me to do it, but I don't have to like it. Or are you Jonah at the end of the story who's waiting there smugly for God to come and smite those for whom you don't like? Are you sitting under that bush and waiting for God to punish those Democrats or Republicans? Well, sorry, politics. <laughs> um, so are you waiting for God to come by and smite them? Um, and then do you get mad when he does it, when God doesn't do that? Or could you be one of those Ninevites whose eyes have just been opened to all the wrong that you have done in your life? The sins that you have committed, have your eyes just been opened and you just realize how much you need God's forgiveness? How much you need God's love and grace? Or are you even one of those sailors who's just desperately trying to figure out what to do with in life? There's so much upheaval. Um, you're trying to figure out who to blame for your troubles. Or is it F? Somewhere all of the above. Is a little bit, each one of those, a little piece of your life? Do you look back and, and you see the different times in your life when you have been? One of these main characters in our story for today. Whether it's Jonah at different parts of his life, or one of the sailors, or the captain, or one of the Ninevites, the king, whatever. Um, 
Can you look back on your life at some point and say, I was that guy? That's the cool thing. While I've never spent the, the I've never spent any time in the belly of a, of a fish, I've definitely had those, mo- those moments where I was aware that it was just me and God. Mano y mano, let's go, Lord. Um, <laughs> but no, where you're wrestling with God, you're trying to figure out what God wants you to do, um, where you're not sure what God wants you to do. I've also been one of those Ninevites whose eyes were open to the sins that I had committed and realized that I was, that I was in need of repentance. And I'm not proud of it, but I've, I've also been like Jonah at the end of the story, waiting for people to um, exasperate with God because He just goes and forgives people for their sins um, when they clearly, we all know that they need to be punished, right? After all, fair is fair, right? But if we are honest with ourselves, we, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's a direct quote from the Bible. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall, have fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. We are all like those Ninevites in need of repentance. We are all like Jonah who's trying to run away from God. We are all like Jonah who's sitting there waiting for those people to get what they deserve. We are all like that. And so that means that we too are in the Bible. We can see ourselves in there because we are the children of God. Every single one of us is a child of God. Do I need to do that a little louder for those in the back? Every single person who walks on this earth, every single person that you meet is a child of God. Now, does that change your mind at all of how, how you look at other people, how you look at your family members, how you look at yourself, that we are all children of God and that somewhere every single person is in this story of Jonah. Everyone is in that story of Jonah. You are somewhere in the story of Jonah, which means that you are somewhere in God's story. God is out there looking for you. God is looking for you. And not, not in a way that where, he wants, where you're going to get smote, smitten, struck down. Um, but no, that God is waiting for you, waiting to say, welcome home, my child. Welcome home. Amen.